Okay, so to anybody who was watching online, my apologies, my computer decided to completely stop. Um, and I'm gonna take a moment to see if I can resurrect the notes. I guess maybe the autosave feature is not not live during uh, during presentation mode. Okay. So again, my apologies and my apologies that the rest of the notes are no longer saved. I can I can post an old copy of the the notes. Um, I think that's probably the best I'll be able to do for you. So coming back to here real quick, point being we have Ka as um, H plus and OCL minus HOCL. So we have that equation. And essentially what we have is a system of equations because we also have the total is equal to HOCL and OCL minus. Then we have, um, and in fact, we kind of use that here um, to get our percent HOCL is going to be equal to HOCL divided by the total. So it doesn't matter too much how you elaborate on all the system, what matters is you have a correct algebraic approach to find that percentage, right? So you could take Ka over H plus and say that's 10 to the negative 7.54 divided by 10 to the negative seven. That gives you what, 10 to the negative 0.54, I think. Um, and that's a ratio that's gonna be equal to the ratio of OCL minus over HOCL. In fact, let's go ahead and get that value. Does anybody have that? 0 0.288. 0 0.288. Thank you. So that means that if we divide one by the other, that's what we get. And so we could say if, uh, if HOCL equals one, then OCL minus equals um, 0 0.288 would probably be the simplest way to do that. So then the total in this fictitious example is 1.288, and then we can get the percentage by taking it that way, right? But when you get the percentage then, so the percent here would be um, one divided by 1.288, right? What you've just done is you've just applied it to this. You just didn't realize it, right? So you've, you've done exactly the same thing I'm about to do if you take that approach. First of all, does that kind of make sense, what I just did? Some sense, not quite. You could solve for the inverse, that would totally make sense too. Um, but I think it comes out the same, hopefully. No, I, I get the, like the result of that, I would get one minus Okay, so this, let me let me think about this. This fraction is the amount of HOCL in the total, right? And so this 1 over 1.288, 1 what is that? Uh, 0.776. Okay. 776? Yes. Okay, so at pH, at a as slightly acidic pH, we do expect more HOCL. So I think this would be the correct form. So if you have one minus that, you probably solve for the percent of OCL minus. Okay, so that's so what we should be solving for is a percent that is HOCL, right? Because that's the percent that's not dissociated. Dis the dissociated form is the OCL minus form. So, so the uh, other way you can do this, if you decide to, is to say instead of just going Ka over H plus and filling all that in, you could leave it as Ka over H plus and say that is equal to 
OCL minus divided by H OCL. And then plug that into our total form, right? So this guy, we can simplify that to be one over, if we just divide the top and the bottom by H OCL, it's gonna be one over one plus OCL minus divided by H OCL. And then we can substitute straight into there, this guy, right? So we can, if we want to, do it that way. And basically we're just holding off on the algebra to punch in the numbers till later. It just is doing it in a slightly elaborate manner. So we could say then the percentage is equal to one over one plus Ka over H plus. And if we solve that, I assume that should be 0.776. And if you would check me on that, that would be great. Because um, this is coming from, you know, I'm going to do. All right, great. So that's kind of uh, the, depending on which way is more intuitive for you, um, if you're solving the problem and getting the fractions correctly, it, it's one, it's the same thing, right? You can take either approach you want mentally or like the way you're stepping through it. Ultimately, you're looking at the fraction. So if you had a problem where you needed to know, you know, something about the actual amount remaining as one or the other, you could get this ratio and then apply the molecular weight here, right? Because you take this 15 milligrams per liter, that's going to apply to your total chlorine. You added a total of 15 milligrams per liter. You can convert that to molar and then use this ratio, use this percentage to figure out, okay, what percentage of that total is my HOCL? Then you can apply that and get a value in molar units uh, that is appropriate. Okay, I'm just going to kind of fly through a couple more slides just so we can finish this off. One of the reasons we do not want to overchlorinate is we don't want to make toxic chemicals. Because we can do that if we have a whole bunch of chlorine and we also have a lot of random organic matter in the water just from whatever leaves and things have been suspended in the water. Um, we get what we call disinfection byproducts. So a lot of times there are thousands and thousands of different mo molecules that exist just as this collection of natural organic matter. And sometimes you have like a methyl group at the end of some random molecule. We're going to say R for random because we're organic chemists and we like to do that. Um, so we have some random molecule. It has a CH3 group on it. If we start substituting by chlorination, we end up with a random deadly molecule with chlorine groups instead of hydrogen groups. So that another way to draw this CH3 would be to draw a, a three three pegs, it's going to imply they are H's there. So if we chlorinate that, we now have a trihalomethane. So we've halogenated it three times. This is now what we would call a trihalomethane. Um, it, maybe it's bromine. Uh, bromine reacts with chlorine. And so you get reactive bromine if you've got reactive chlorine. And so we can get some kind of nasty molecules. They're not going to be huge quantities, and it's going to be a variety of them, but any molecule that has kind of this form would fall into this trihalomethane camp. Uh, likewise, we can get haloacetic acids, same thing happening, except it's a acetic acid, like vinegar, functional groups somewhere in that random mess of a molecule, right? And the concern then is that these are uh, a little bit more toxic than they used to be. <laughs> used to be kind of no issue, and now they have some toxicity or possibly carcinogenicity. So generally, we don't want a lot of them, and we get a lot of them if we have a lot of organic matter and a high chlorine dose. So we just have to try to optimize less chlorine dose, the better, so long as we're getting our disinfection properly. So maybe we need to design our reactor so we have more space to do less concentrated chlorine, or maybe we need to do 
um, something to remove some of the organic matter before we go. Uh, we'll pick up on this concept because we do need to spend a little bit of time on it uh, for next time, talking about quantifying our disinfection. All right, sorry for that uh, random interruption. See you guys on Thursday.